Hello, welcome to the Roseville New Church. I'm Pastor Howard Thompson. And welcome to Spiritual Shorts. This episode of Spiritual Shorts is intended to support home worship. You know, we just finished recently a 10-part series on the Ten Commandments. And while going through those commandments, some of us might have had thoughts about not only things that we had done wrong within the context of those commandments, but also the ways in which other people have violated the commandments and we have been hurt by that. Reflecting over the last couple of weeks what I would do next, I, I decided that I would go ahead and take a look at forgiveness. So for the next five videos, five weeks, I'm going to look at forgiveness. I'm going to start by looking at really just the question of why. You know, why would we forgive someone else? Some of the things that have happened to us in our lives have been pretty terrible and, and, and they're unforgivable. Week two, I'm going to take a look at the how. Well, how do I forgive another person? And three, and I think this is important, I, we're going to look at how do I receive forgiveness? What does it mean when somebody says to me, I forgive you? The fourth week, we're going to look at, I think, something that's difficult for a lot of us to accept and to reflect on it, and that is self-forgiveness. And many people uh, make mistakes in their lives and and you know to the extent that those mistakes can help you make better decisions in the future well that's great but it's not uncommon to hear a story of something that somebody has done that 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 just sticks with them and 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 sadly uh, just constantly makes them feel guilty for things that they've done 10 15 20 even 30 years ago so we're gonna look at self forgiveness. And lastly, we're going to look at the transformation that the Lord promises to come when we are able to truly forgive. So let's begin. As I do every uh, spiritual short home worship video, I'll have a link in the upper corner here to a video. It'll also be in the description. Um, I haven't actually decided what this week's videos are going to be, but uh, I, I hope you find that they contribute positively to your home worship experience. I'll open the word then, and we will then say a prayer together and then get to the message. Those who do good in their life for the sake of the Lord or for the sake of the neighbor, those are the ones in heaven. Amen. Please join me for saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So let's look at the question of why a person would want to forgive. And I, I want to look at it in very practical terms, very natural in our lives terms. And, and I want to note, you know, before I went into ministry, which was 10 plus years ago, I had a career in risk management. Specifically, that career was uh, helping schools with their risk management programs. And because I dealt with schools, unfortunately, on occasion, I would wind up having to deal with matters of child sexual abuse. 
Now that's about the worst thing you can imagine. Not only is it the worst thing you can imagine, it probably for most of us ranks up there in that category of unforgivable. I cannot forgive the perpetrator of child sexual abuse. So, you know, how can we forgive something that is unforgivable like child sexual abuse? Well, I, I want to answer that question by telling you about Eva Kaur and what Eva Kaur had to say about forgiveness. But first, you know, who is Eva Kaur? Eva Kaur was uh, born in the late 1930s. In the 1930s and early 40s, she and her family lived in Eastern Europe. I, I think in the area of Transylvania or today Romania. And they were Jewish. And Eva and her twin sister, or Eva and her entire family, wound up in Auschwitz. Even her, her twin sister were very young children, and, and typically young children would be useless in that system, so they would be immediately sent to death. But Eva and her twin sister Miriam were twins, and that put them in a very special category, fortunately and unfortunately. Fortunately because it probably saved their lives, but unfortunately because it meant that they went into a special area of Auschwitz where they had to be experimented on by Josef Mengele. He's one of the worst characters on the face of the planet, especially in the Holocaust. Here's what Eva Kaur says about forgiveness. My forgiveness has nothing to do with the perpetrator. It has nothing to do with any religion. It is my act of self-healing, self-liberation, and self-empowerment. I had no power over my life up to the time that I discovered that I could forgive. Eva was an outspoken proponent for forgiveness, and boy, I cannot think of a, a more powerful testimony to the power of forgiveness than that given by Eva. Eva lived a long life, passing away only recently, within the last several years. And she spoke often of this subject of forgiveness. So from a very natural or practical sense, Eva said, I forgave because I felt powerless until I had forgiven. And it had nothing to do with the perpetrator. So there are very practical reasons to forgive. So now let's talk a little bit about what the Lord says about forgiveness. And it's very, very easy for us to simply look at the Lord's prayer. You know, the prayer the Lord instructed us to, do, to say. And in that prayer, we say, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. We say this every week. Some of us say it every day. The Lord seems to be saying that our willingness to forgive contributes to our own ability to receive forgiveness. Now, I, I make a distinction there. We'll talk about this in greater detail in a couple of weeks, but I make that distinction there that it's not about God forgiving us or Jesus forgiving us. 
It's about us receiving that forgiveness. But we'll talk about that later. So the Lord talks about it in the prayer that he teaches us all. He also teaches about it in many other places. And, and one of my favorite stories has, has Peter coming to the Lord to talk about forgiveness. And, and you know, Peter, as much as, as any of his disciples knew and was listening very carefully to what the Lord was teaching, he even seemed to be getting some of it and understanding some of it. And, and on this matter of forgiveness, he said, Lord, I'm uh, on this matter of forgiveness, how many times should I forgive my brother? Should I forgive my brother seven times? Now, I, I, it almost sounds a little bit like Peter was feeling pretty good about himself. You know, I, I'm asking a question I know the answer to. Seven's a good number, especially spiritually. Um, but the Lord says, no, not seven. I say you should forgive him 70 times seven times. Now, that's a lot of forgiveness. And you know, the simplest understanding of that is to really be able to forgive, you must do it often. You must do it a lot because it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So practically in our physical lives, Eva Kaur explains forgiveness is very useful. It is empowering. Spiritually, clearly, the Lord tells us you should forgive. You should forgive often, and you should make it a regular practice of forgiveness. And Swedenborg gives us some greater understanding or insight into this whole idea of forgiveness. And he does this in, in a way of talking about this, the effect of spirits on our lives. You see, we are constantly surrounded by spirits. We are surrounded by good spirits and we are surrounded by evil spirits. And those spirits are trying to do the Lord's work in influencing us to make decisions. But those spirits only influence us to the extent that we allow them or we invite their influence. And one of the ways that we invite their influence is to harbor a grudge, to not be able to forgive somebody, to wish evil on somebody else. And, and the worst of it is to either mete out that evil or to at least see that evil come to that person. When, when we cannot forgive, we are inviting evil spirits who love to punish, love to see people suffer. We are inviting their influence in our lives and we are connecting us at that moment with societies in hell. Again, we'll talk about that more also in, in the later weeks, but it's important to know that forgiveness has both physical and spiritual consequences. The Lord tells us to do it. It's hard to do, but we must try. Amen. So I'll have another hymn for a closing hymn. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Spiritual Shorts. And God bless you. May the Lord give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. Amen. <laughs>